from networking, from our email, from everything that, that, that the, uh, is going like this. And more than that, it's becoming more and more concentrated as well into a, a few small, small players. And, you know, I, I said to some um, American investigative journalists earlier in the year, when someone raised the issue about privacy, and I said, look, you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a, 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 you know, a congressman's tax returns, official tax returns, or would you rather have all their social networking information and their credit history and all of this other stuff that's available in, in, in private proprietary data sets? It's only available to a, a small number of people. You know, would you rather have all their, uh, you know, their, their, their um, uh, geolocations for the last you know, 12 months or so on? You know, what is actually going to tell you more about this person? What is actually going to tell you whether, you know, who he's meeting, what's actually going on? And, and, and I think that that's a, and, you know, this isn't about, um, uh, this isn't about uh, paranoia or, or, or big companies, you know, uh, trying to watch you all the time, you know, so that they control you. This is just a, a, a fact that the, the biggest, richest, most powerful databases are not the government databases, those closed databases. And actually, I see open data, you know, uh, much of the things that people like myself are campaigning for for open data um, are already available if you've got the money. So if you want all the Belgian company, reg all the com Belgian company data, then you can buy that for 100,000 euros. If you want it as a citizen, tough luck. You know, there are only five, I think, I, I think I'm right in saying, but I may be uh, wrong here, but I think there are you know, a very small number, possibly about five companies buying that, who are then basically using that in a rent-seeking rent business model. And as someone that's been in the private sector all their life, you know, when you get those sorts of business models, they are, are, are not just damaging for society, restricting the, the use of this core information about, you know, uh, and we need to remember that a company is something that is, a, is an artificial entity created by, or, or given a separate legal personality by the state, separate from the managers and from the owners, you know, for the good of society. You know, and, and but the, the, uh, when, when you do that, not only is it, does that undermine, if you like, the, uh, the, the social compact, the, 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 the uh, relationship between companies, people, the state, and so on? Um, but it actually, it, it, it also um, kills innovation. It says that only those people, only, only those companies that already have power get to play in these games. And I think when I look at things like the, the, the European Commission, and we've talked to the European Commission, we've been involved in some standards, settings, processes for, with, uh, with the European Commission, I see something that is so darn complex, so tortuous to navigate, takes so long to work through that actually, frankly, we're better off not trying. We're better off just actually going off and solving some problems. And so there are good people in the, um, in, in the commission. There are good people in the parliament. You know, I have a huge amount of time for Nelly Kroos and, and, and her cabinet. But I think fundamentally what, what governments need to do, what, uh, what um, uh, governmental organizations in the government like, like the, the Commission um, and, and you know things like that need to do is, is, is why they're there in the first place they're a proxy for the people you know or they're a proxy for the proxies for the people mm, let's again pick up on Simon's point Carol can I ask you to offer your perspective yeah saying what's going on uh, on, on, the, no, on the good side is, is fairly easy because there's a, so so few things that are going well that, uh, that you can count on, your, on, on the, you know, the finger of your hand. Conversely, we have spoken so much today about openness, open this and open that. Uh, open means creating commons, creating space where you can access without asking permission. And so the more content is created, the less the space for commons to happen at all levels is shrinking. That's, that's amazing. Everybody speaks, and uh, e even the unusual suspects say that open is, is great. But if you look at what happens in legislation, initiatives, everything, you, say, you see the opposite is happening. And you see waves and waves and waves of things that it's, uh, it seems a, an impossible task to tackle each of them, because they are coming so fast that you, the, the time you have challenge uh, effectively ACTA, the next big thing is coming. And there are so many things. So uh, international treaties, uh, we have touched upon that, but we have not spoken uh, sufficiently about them. 
Uh, they are, all of them are very well aimed. They are very good intentions. The, the scope is very, very, uh, very, very noble. But in the details, you find some piece of legislation. And I understand Simon when he's disgusted by most of what is happening. And one of the things that um, is, uh, international treaties want to achieve is harmonization. Harmonization is a very good thing. Pity that when harmonization occurs, is always at the highest level possible of IP protection. And I always uh, use the word IP maximalism. And there is, apparently there is no contrary force that uh, brings things to uh, uh, a, a, good, a good average measure. Everything must be prolonged, extended, expanded, uh, more pervasive, and one example is software patents. We thought we have fought software patents in Europe, and, and we have more and more and more and more software patents. So, uh, uh, and we have uh, uh, the unitary uh, patent project, which is, per se, seems to be a very good thing. So uh, why having 25, 27 different systems? Why don't we have one single, um, one single system for uh, having a patent? I don't, I, don't, I don't mean the EPO, which is a, uh, a distributed system, more, more, more or less. But, well, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, the, the, the actual, the, the present system of, of patenting is, is a good thing per se, but I'm sure that in certain areas, patents should, shouldn't be allowed. And frankly, one of, of the most uh, interesting voices that this has, 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 uh, from which uh, this has come is one very free market uh, 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 Chicago school judge, uh, Judge Posner in, in, the, in the States. But why unitary patents are relevant for, um, uh, for uh, software patents? Oh, because of several details. And one is the uh, taking away the control over the granting of patent uh, or uh, on the highest level from the uh, European Court of Justice, which last year has been one of the, uh, well, voices that brought comfort to, to us because they have uh, issued one very important decision, the SAS against uh, versus uh, war programming language which has redefined an area of commons and for, for one, one, once, once in a while. Uh, you cannot copyright uh, interfaces and languages and file formats, which is important. This is what I understood the law of being, but uh, again, IP maximalist okay. uh, uh, went for, for, for the whole thing and said, also API needs yeah. to be patented. So Perhaps I could ask Keith to, to comment particularly on this area of the unitary patent. I mean, how, what impact do you think that might have on, on Linux specifically, and what are your sort of thoughts about patents generally in the last year or so? Uh, I think we've seen some positives, but also some, some, some negatives that represent a perversion of the, uh, the, the patent system and the, uh, the adjudication process in the United States, uh, particularly as it pertains to a famous case uh, that uh, was handed down, the verdict was handed down not too long ago, which will unlikely or undoubtedly be appealed, which is the Samsung suit, the Apple Samsung suit. And I think at multiple levels, that's uh, endemic of uh, some of the problems in, uh, in the U.S. star-driven culture uh, that pervades the, uh, all aspects of life, even the, uh, the, jury, uh, uh, the jury deliberation room. <laughs> Uh, the precedent set by a case like that is, uh, is very dangerous and damaging, not just for open source, but across the board. Uh, I was just at uh, Land Rover's facility last week at an open source event there uh, in uh, central England, and uh, I was reminded when I looked at the Evoke that uh, now, based on this case, uh, the fact that that uh, one year after the Evoke's introduction, the uh, Ford has produced a car which looks remarkably similar, uh, inside and out. That uh, you know maybe there'll be there'll be now a suit uh, brought by Land Rover against Ford for look and feel. Uh, we've we've in, in, in endeavored into the arena of the absurd, uh, attempting the the runway shows are all happening over the last five weeks: New York, Milan, uh, Tokyo's. Uh, London, Paris, 
Uh, everyone knows that in that business, the, the half-life of a couture dress is about 15 minutes before it's coming off of a production line somewhere around the world uh, for a lot less money with a lot different brand name associated with it. We live in a world of emulation. Uh, we've replicated uh, things on a regular basis, and we look to essentially, in an awkward way, create something different, better, or price performance on a, on a price performance better, more appealing. So we have that case as as kind of the low point, and I think we'll we'll see where trade dress and and the restriction of of relevant. Uh, 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 prior art that was excluded and uh, juries that are, are support hometown uh, um, justice and don't necessarily, uh, can't escape from the, uh, the cult of the, uh, the black mock turtleneck that uh, Steve Jobs has left us with. Um, we've created mythology around people which is completely uh, irrelevant and, and uh, in this case false. Uh, because as we all should understand that the place where smartphones come from is from a one woman, and her name is Donna Dubinsky. She's never mentioned anywhere, but without her, smartphones wouldn't exist, because when Steve Jobs was kicked out of, out of, uh, out of Apple in, uh, in 86, uh, they bet the farm on the Newton, which was essentially the version, of the equivalent of the Lisa. It was the elegant failure that, that Apple is so, so wonderful at producing that gave rise to a whole generation of transitional devices that Donna Dubinsky uh, championed at Palm, at US Robotics, and then at Handspring before we ultimately made the phase shift to a commercially viable product because of networks and content being accessible. And so we've got this myth that we live with around who created what, and, and our memories tend to be very short in the United States because we're constantly looking for uh, to be influenced by the next star that we want to make, that we want to build, and then, and then destroy. And so that, that is the setting for the backdrop of the patent wars. We've had all kinds of uh, perversions where now, as I said earlier, we're having people who have legitimately developed true innovations in radio frequency technology over the last 35 years and spent tens of billions of dollars developing it, whether it be Alcatel or Ericsson or Motorola or Samsung or Nokia, these are the companies who built the mobile industry. Now they're being deprived of the ability to use these patents in, in the counterclaims, not even in as, as, as basic uh, litigation, uh, offensive litigation, but as counterclaims to be able to defend and protect the industries that they've created by companies that have additive technology, but nothing that, that is as central and fundamental. And in the backdrop of this, we've got some good news stories. We've got ITC reform, which is coming down the pike. One of the real challenges we've had in the U.S. is that uh, creativity is never in short supply. We've seen it in the financial services uh, industry. Uh,